I'll actually group Florence and San Antonio Valley together because they're, I served in the same stake for 14 months of my mission and just went to different wards within that stake. Um, but it, it all, they're all pretty similar. Um, so in that stake in Florence slash San Tan Valley, everybody works at the prisons. <laughs> and so um, they all um, just kind of have rough days, you know, going and being around that kind of environment. Um, yeah, I would definitely say most of them live in, or work at the prisons or a lot of them live out in the middle of the desert because they really like the seclusion from the city life. Um, but then they'll travel to like travel like an hour or more to work um, where there's more people. Um, but it's just that important to them that they have their privacy and quiet. And it's beautiful out there. Um, there's no street lights. So that's also really scary when we would be biking at night and there are no lights. Um, but it's beautiful because you can see the stars so bright. Um, there, it's like little pockets um, of suburbs, or not even suburbs. What, what's that word called? Like a group of houses? A subdivision, like a sub, like subdivisions in the middle of the desert, and there would be like miles between them, and so um, that was kind of interesting. Um, a lot of them like to live just in the middle of the desert on dirt roads. There's roads that are made roads that probably shouldn't be roads because it would hurt your car, but um, so there's definitely like a middle class who live in these houses, but then there's some that um, are just very poor and humble and just have lived there their whole lives. Um, and I, I would say probably my favorite memory about serving in Florence, um, one day I was out with my companion and we were walking the streets and this guy walks out of this house and he's so angry. And um, so he walks out and he was just so upset and the sister that I was with, she did not want to talk to him. She's like, I don't think it's a good idea. Like, he looks really mad. And I, w I was like, no, no, no. Like, yeah, we can talk to him, you know. And she she was pretty new to serving to Florence. So, like, you know, it's kind of scary at first. <laughs> and so, um, but I, you know, that was my first area. So I was like, yeah, we got this. So I walk up to this guy. I'm like, hey. And he's like, I just, I'm having a really bad day right now. Like, I don't think that I can talk to anyone and I was like, well, is it okay if we give you a present? And he was like, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and so I like whip a Book of Mormon out of my bag and like put it behind my back. I'm like, so we didn't wrap this present. I'm really sorry, but, um, but it's something that's really special. And we know that you're gonna like it a lot. And I said, I really like it because on my bad days I can read from it and I feel better. And so, <laughs> I like showed it to him and I was like, it's the Book of Mormon. And then I just shared briefly with him what the Book of Mormon was. And then I shared with him my favorite scripture that I read when I'm having a bad day. And, um, and as I go to hand him the book and he goes to grab it, I notice that his fist is bleeding. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh my gosh, you are having a bad day. I'm so sorry, I just stopped you. And you're like gushing blood. I'm like, and he was like, oh, it's okay. And, He's like, but thank you so much. And he just like held the book around. He's like, thank you. And then we're like, all right, well, bye. And he just walks away. And the elders who were also serving that word said that later on they were at a member's house and that guy with the bloody knuckles <laughs> had walked into the house and was like, yeah, I just ran into these missionaries and they gave me this book and they like told me all about it. And the elders were there and they're like, yeah, hey, like we didn't, we talk about that too. And and they're like, it was just a funny sight to see this guy, you know, bloody hand holding the Book of Mormon, like, yeah, so life is good. <laughs> so that was super cool. Um, but yeah, Florence is a good place. Very old, historic town. A lot of crazy things happened there back in the wild, wild west. Um, a lot of farming, um, but just a beautiful place to be. Just good people there all related to each other, but so loving and welcoming. So there's a lot of snowbirds in Arizona because Arizona has really good winters. Um, and so a lot of Canadians, like old people from Canada or Minnesota, those are the two popular ones. During the winter, they come and they have these houses that they bought in 
Arizona and in places like Sandtime Valley and Florence, the houses are really cheap. So they'll buy these houses. So during the summer when you go tracting, you'll probably go like 10 houses with nobody living there just because they're all snowbird houses. Um, and so um, during the winter on Valentine's Day, Florence actually does this historic tour where in like people who live in Arizona don't really care, but the snowbirds care because, you know, it's something touristy to do. And so they actually enlisted the missionaries to help with it. So we were giving tours of different parts of Florence. And I was given the big court building. And um, it's the oldest building, um, just very beautiful. And they restored a lot of it. But I didn't, like, I don't know a lot about Florence. Like, I was just there to serve. And so I don't know all the logistics, the ins and outs. And so people would ask me questions. They're like, so, like, is this really railing? Like, is this the original railing? I'm like, oh, yeah, like, definitely. And then I'd be like, I have no idea. I'm just telling these people what they want to hear. <laughs> and um, But I did get to learn a lot of really cool things about Florence. Like, um, there was a woman who had murdered her boss. And because of that, she was um, going to be executed by hanging. And when they hung her, something, I can't remember what it was, but something was wrong. And because of that, her, she was decapitated. And it was horrifying. And, like, the guy who was, um, I don't know, like, the sheriff or something, he was actually a member. And he got a lot of ridicule for it, that he didn't make sure that that wouldn't happen. Because it was just gory and just horrifying what happened. And so... Um, yeah, it was really sad for him because he went through ridicule his whole life. And there hasn't been a woman since then that's been executed in the state of Arizona. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty sad. <laughs> How long ago was that, do you know? Um, back in, like, the 1800s. Like, yeah. Yeah, when, in, like, Florence was still kind of being uh, populated. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then also another story, a sheriff and, a dep and his deputy were fighting over a girl, and so they had a gun showdown in the middle of Florence, and uh, pretty sure the deputy shot and killed the sheriff. They shot each other, and so they both were wounded, but the sheriff <laughs> ended up dying. <laughs> so yeah, some crazy stories. <laughs> now there's 13 prisons in Florence, so... Yeah. Oh, okay. One more story about Florence. <laughs> One time, um, I actually, so I wasn't in my first area anymore, but my trainer was still there and she, um, we were on exchanges. And so I got to be with her back in Florence for the day. So fun to be with her and to see all of the members again. And so her and I had went to go get gas. It was the end of the night and we had finished our, um, our, split for the day and so we were about to head back so I could go back with my companion and we went to go get gas at the gas station and she would always tell me when I first came out she's like go go talk to someone like don't just sit here like while I'm getting gas like you should go talk to someone and that terrified me I was like what no 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 I can't do that I can't go by myself and talk to someone and I was just so afraid and so when she was getting gas I like got out of the car and there wasn't anybody around. There wasn't anyone getting gas. But there was this lady who was sitting down on this curb. And I went over and I sat down next to her. And I was like, hey, how are you doing? And I just started talking to her. And uh, she told me that she had a son that was on a mission. And se something seemed off. I was like, oh, do you know where he's serving? And she said somewhere in Asia. But she couldn't remember which mission it was. And I was like, okay. And I was like, all right, well, um, I was like, well, where are you from? And she said, I'm from Queen Creek. I'm like, oh, Queen Creek, then what are you doing down here? And she's like, I just got out of jail. And um, you see that a lot, and it's really sad. Um, and so she was waiting for her ride. And so then it kind of made sense to me that she probably knew about her son being on a mission, but because of the life that she was living, she probably wasn't a big part of her son's life anymore. And so... Um, so then I asked her if she needed to use our phone to call her ride to make sure that they were still coming. 
And so we walk over to my trainer and she used our phone and called someone. She's like, okay, they said that they'll be here soon. I was like, okay, well, before we go, can we share something with you? And so we shared a message with her and just bore testimony and tears just filled her eyes, you know, and she um, gave us hugs, you know, before we left. Um, And so I think that was really special because she probably was at a very low moment in her life, you know, just getting out of jail, but to be able to... um, run into someone that could give her hope, you know, and to remind her of th- something that's special and important in her life, you know, and hopefully to, you know, for her to talk about her son, you know, that that also probably was very good for her to remember um, that there are people in her life that love her and need her. So that was a good story.